This is Llewellyn Earl. <laughs> he wants to eat. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Run. Ah. So that's Llewellyn Earl. <laughs> He's shedding a lot. Back to the neighbor's cat. Or he owns the neighbor, however you want to. We all, you know, all cats are. The neighbor calls him Vladdy, but he's Llewellyn Earl. We have our own cat, Nosby. Nosferatu, so we already had a vampire. He's a little more standoffish. He's actually, since the raccoon showed up last night, along with three hedgehogs. Like, I stepped outside the door. It's a raccoon and a hedgehog, both eating from the same bowl. Wish I could have got a photo. Cat hair in the air. Cat hair in the air. Sun comes out. Then it looks like rain. Then it's sun. What are you going to do? Yeah, eat on, you fatty. Eat on. Llewellyn Earl has a very high metabolism. I think he's still growing. And he always eats. Eats and eats and eats. Now, yeah. Speaking of, now that we've solved fitness in the last video, which in case you missed it, the gist of it was, find a routine that works for you, stick to it, like you stick to brushing your teeth. But what about the other side, the intellect, he says as his voice goes higher. Well, at the moment, a couple books I got to recommend that I'm actually in the process of finishing up right now. First one, right out the gate, is Autobiography of Mark Twain. This is a fantastic book. This is fascinating. This is uh, only released in 2010, as per Mark Twain's stipulation, to not be published for 100 years after his death. Um, it makes it more candid, although, I mean, granted, their parts did get come out earlier because people don't respect the wishes of the dead, especially over 100 years. Oh, well, no, it's my little, hold on. What do you think about Mark Twain, Llewellyn Earl? What do you think? Look, look in the camera. Little Bilashi. Bilashi, you still hungry? You still hungry? All right, off you go. Have some fun. Woo! Every time it's a hair storm. So, the, 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 the point I want to make was a couple things. First of all, that, that hundred year lag is very interesting. Uh, it ended up being a bestseller in 2010, so that makes Mark Twain, I think, the only author, well, certainly one of the few, who's had a bestseller in three different centuries, which is Mark Twain. But, of course, so uh, the other thing that's interesting about it is it's he dictated it to a stenographer, which makes for a very intimate experience, like he's talking to you, talking... To you. Can I say it again? Yes, he's like he's talking to you. Uh, it's really fascinating. Across over a hundred years, you just really feel his his personality and his intellect and interspersed there are articles and, and other bits that you know have the classic Mark Twain fully edited prose that we all know and love. Now it's sunny again, windy, I don't know. But uh, you also get the sense of him talking to you, and it's really touching. There's one chapter on his daughter, Susie, and she unfortunately died quite young, 22, I believe, 23. And it really, it tears you up. It's quite a, it gets you. It's like hearing a friend tell you about the loss of a loved one. And it just, yeah, for someone like me who, you know, wants to cry more, yet finds it difficult. It really did show me my tear ducts are still in working order. But very quickly before I go, say, hey, before I go, Llewellyn Earl's after a fly in the window. Llewellyn Earl, what do you think about Mark Twain? What do you think about Mark Twain? I think he's very good. He's the best. Aye, aye, aye. Back over there. Real quick before I go. Lesser known author, but fantastic writer, James Salter. He often writes war novels um, based on his own experience as a, a fighter pilot in Korea, and I think in the Pacific Theater of Second War, but I could be wrong. 
this particular book, Solo Faces, is actually about climbing. It's supposed to be quite spot on. Just watching Llewellyn chase a fly as I review. Multitasking. I think he's got it. Wow. Mighty Hunter. Oh, it's a winning. Well, speaking of obsession, that's what this book is about. It's about passion, obsession. In fact, as the Boston Globe says, a beautiful, sad, even tragic novel about the way men test themselves. Or as John Irving commented on the front blurb, a terrific novel, compelling, sad, wise, and kind-hearted. Now, I'm not in much of a climber. I did it once uh, with a couple of my siblings who are really into it, and I nailed that 510 using only my arms. And then I was done. I never did climb again. <laughs> Apparently the feet and legs are, are also quite important in this sport. So anyway, those siblings of mine that are into running, you know who you are. Give it a read. Let me know how accurate it captures your feelings of clattering, as they say. All right, Llewellyn Earl, is Nostra going to show up or did that raccoon get him? They call raccoon in German. It's an introduced animal here, right? You don't see them as often, but they're around. And um, they call them a waschbär, which means a washing bear. <laughs> Pretty fitting. So hopefully, Nosby shows up soon. Well, the noodles probably not. Watch the video. Bye. Bye. I'm out of here. Thanks for coming out. All right. See you later. Have a good one.